In this video, we're going to learn how to use and create tracks in Pro Tools and place audio clips into them. Each track has a number of tools on the left and a section of workspace on the timeline that gives us a place to work with our imported audio files. The tools on the left can control volume in numerous ways, panning, automation, plugins, recording sources, and audio routing. For this video, we're going to focus specifically on three types of audio tracks, what they do, and how to use them. First, you can create a basic single channel or mono audio track by clicking on Track in the menu above, and then clicking on New. You can also use the keyboard shortcut, Shift-Command-N. With the New Tracks dialog box open, we can now choose how many tracks we want to create, what type of track, either mono or stereo, what kind of track, in this case we're going to make an audio track, how the track is displayed, we'll always keep this on samples, and the name of the audio track. We can rename the audio track as many times as we want in the project, so I rarely do that here. Then click on the button that says Create. And here we have our first monophonic audio track. I can place any audio I've imported into my project from the clip list by left clicking on the name of the clip and dragging that into the timeline and simply letting go. Now that the audio has been placed in my timeline, I can move it, change its volume, and edit it. Let's go over some of the basic features of the track. The name of the track can be changed by clicking here in this white bar where we see Audio 1 displayed. When we do that, we have the option to name the track and or write any comments about the track that we'd like to. You should name your tracks something meaningful. In this case, there's narration on the track, specifically my own. So I'm going to call this Chad N-A-R-R -R for narration. What nomenclature you use is up to you, but it should be meaningful not just to yourself, but to anyone else looking at the project. The specific controls we're going to go over right now on the track will be solo. When I click on the solo button, if I have multiple tracks in the project, this will be the only one that plays. The next dialog box that shows up, if I click on mute, this track will no longer play. A lot of times when you're working on a project, you may want to use mute and solo to focus in on specific parts of your project without having to make any volume changes. You can change the volume of all the clips on this track at one time using the volume slider, which is located right in this box labeled VOL. If I left click and hold, a small fader pops up that will allow me to either raise or lower the volume of all the clips uniformly in this track. Next dialog box that shows up, Pro Tools is asking us which folder would we like this imported audio to go to. The control below volume, pan, allows me to adjust where the audio is playing, either on the left or the right side. Next dialog box that shows up, Pro Tools is asking us which folder would we like this imported audio to go to. The default audio folder for this particular project. This isn't something that you'll often be using, but you should be aware of it. Each track also has its own meter displayed vertically next to the name. When I play a clip, you'll see the audio levels displayed. Next dialog box that shows up, Pro Tools is asking us which folder would we like this imported audio to go to. This meter shows the volume of the clip as it was recorded. It does not reflect any of the changes that we make with the volume slider. You can also change the size of the track. If you go to the bottom edge of the left side of the track, you'll see that my cursor changes. If I left click and hold, I can resize the track either larger or smaller. I can also choose a number of preset track sizes by left clicking on this ruler and choosing a size. 
medium, jumbo, large, whatever allows you to see and work with the media on the track, that's what you should use. If you like to color code your tracks, you can also double click on this color bar on the left side of the track and choose a new color for your track. On a mono track, by default, the sound will play equally loud in both ears. Most of your recorded narration should be recorded in mono, as monophonic voices are easier to focus on and mix. You can pan this monophonic sound left or right for a desired effect, but keep in mind, if someone is only listening to your production with one speaker, they might be missing out on some of your sound. Now let's talk about stereo tracks. You can create a stereo track in the exact same way that you created your first mono track. Click on Track, New, then create one new stereo audio track and choose Create. A stereo track is the exact same as a mono track, with the exception that they have two channels of audio instead of one. This is indicated by a faint gray line going down the center of the track. For more immersive ambient sound, I'd recommend recording in stereo. Also, most music is recorded and mixed in stereo. To place a stereo clip into a stereo track, you need only click on the clip in the clip list and drag it into the stereo track. You'll see here that the stereo track has two channels of audio, whereas the monophonic track only has one. Now is a good time to point out that monophonic tracks cannot go in stereo tracks, and stereo tracks cannot go in monophonic tracks. If we look in the clip list, we'll see that every stereo clip is labeled as such. We see the name of the clip, and then stereo right next to it. So if it's not labeled stereo, it can go in a mono track. If it is labeled stereo, it has to go into the stereo track. Where the tracks are placed vertically has no meaning in Pro Tools. They can be moved around freely. If I left click and hold anywhere in the colored section of the track, I can drag it up or drag it down. So unlike the tracks in a video editing program or the layers in a program like Photoshop, the vertical orientation of tracks and Pro Tools has no bearing on the sound. So you can place them wherever you'd like. You can delete any track in your project by double tapping or right clicking on the name. Keep in mind that when you do this in Pro Tools, this is not undoable. So make sure you really want to delete that track. You can also create new tracks by simply dragging a clip in from the clip list. So if I drag in Chad Narration into the timeline, it will automatically create a track for that clip. I can do the same thing with any stereo file and it will automatically create a stereo track. Sometimes you might have an audio file that says stereo, but actually contains monophonic data. Some recorders only record sound on one side of a stereo file. So if I drag in this clip, it's a stereo clip and it creates a stereo track, but we'll notice the sound is only on one side. I started to, you know, look at dance as a way for me to get exercise. This can be profoundly annoying to listen to. The easiest fix happens before we drag the clip in. If we look in our clip list, we'll see that every stereo file that we've imported has a small little triangle right to the left of the name. If I click on that triangle, it opens up that stereo file and shows us the left channel and the right channel. Each of these channels can be independently dragged into the timeline. So if I only want to use one of the channels, in this case, the left channel, I can left click and hold and drag that single channel into the timeline and it will create a new monophonic track just for that channel. If I'm doing this with a pre-existing track that I've already created, that works as well. Just click on whatever side of the stereo file that you'd like 
and drag that into your track. And now we have. I started to, you know, look at dance as a way for me to. Sound plate equally on both sides with a monophonic file. Another case is you might find that your recorder has created a dual mono file, which is a two channel stereo file with identical audio on both channels. Using the previously described method, you can easily pick one of these mono channels to work with in your project. So if we look at this example, we'll see that the audio is equal on both sides. You know, look at dance as a way for me to get exercise. But it is still technically a stereo file. While we can work with this as is, I do recommend only working with one channel. When you're working on a 13 inch laptop, you don't have a lot of screen real estate to use, and that can be used up really quickly, really fast. So working with monophonic channels is not only visually easier to work with, but it's also easier to mix in the long run. So given the option, just open up your dual mono file, choose one side, drag it into your timeline, and you'll have one monophonic file to work with. Get dance as a way for me to get exercise. While we work with both mono and stereo tracks, most distributed audio is in fact stereo. So most of the time, the audio that will bounce or export out of Pro Tools will be in stereo. This brings us to the third type of track we'll be discussing, the main, or as Avid calls it, master fader. You can create this track in the exact same way that we've been creating other tracks. Track, new, and we're going to create one new stereo master fader and choose create. The master fader doesn't contain any sound at all. Rather, its purpose is more for monitoring and mastering all of the audio coming from the tracks in your project. The meters on this track show all of the cumulative volume changes from the other tracks present in your project. When we change the level of audio on a track, those changes are represented in these meters. If raising the volume of a track, always be wary of the meters in this track turning red, which indicates you've raised the volume of something far too loud and risk distorting or clipping your sound. So here I have a voice and I have some music playing. You know, look at dance as a way for me to get. If I only want to hear the narration, I can click the solo button. You know, look at dance as a way for me. If I don't want to hear the narration at all, I can mute it. If I think the music is too low. You know, look at dance as a way. I can for raise me the volume. Get... If the music is too loud. You know, look at dance as a way. For... I can lower the volume. As I raise and lower the volume of this narration, watch the meters on the master fader. You know, look at dance as a way for me to get extra. When I lower the volume, you'll see that the faders have gone almost completely down. When I raise the volume, you know, look at dance as a way for me to get exercise. You'll see that I've raised the volume so much that these little red LEDs have come on. This means I've raised the volume too much and I'm introducing distortion into my mix. So even though I have a perfectly clean recording, I can cause distortion here, just like I can cause distortion if I'm recording something too loud with one of my recorders. So if you're seeing something like this, you're gonna to need to turn the volume down of the offending track. You know, look at dance as a way for me to get exercise. Here we're no longer causing distortion, but you'll see that the red lights are still there. I can click on those to make them go away. You know, look at dance as a way for me to get exercise. And it's important to note that sound is cumulative. When I have this track playing and then I unmute this music underneath it. You know, look at dance as a way for me to get exercise. Are collectively louder than they are on their own. So you're going to constantly be looking at these meters to see the changes you're making in the tracks while you're adjusting the volume of everything in your project. The volume slider on the master fader affects the volume of everything in your project 
uniformly. You know, look at dance as a way for me to get exercise. So if your entire project is a little low or a little loud, you can adjust everything there, saving you the time of having to adjust volume independently on each track. Each speaking voice you have in your project should have its own track. You should keep ambient sound, music, and sound effects on their own tracks as well. When dealing with a great many elements in a project, it is essential to stay organized. Track names should always represent the content in those tracks. So if I have narration on this track, the track is called Nair. If I have an interview on this track, the track is called Interview 1. If I had a second interview, I'd make another track, Label that interview two and have that have its own place in the timeline. There are a lot of reasons for keeping elements on their individual tracks, but we'll go into that in later videos. So that's how you make tracks, how you use the tracks, how you move them around, and how you can take the audio from imported clips and put those into the tracks you want to use.